Hi, I'm Paul Strinkler and welcome to the second in this series looking at the importance of building effective data governance, compliance, security and management strategy and how NetApp's DataSense platform provides us with a simple to deploy, simple to manage and cost effective tool to enhance our information management and security capabilities. In the first video of this series, we took a look at why, why we might want to do this, why we might want to build such a strategy and how the DataSense tool might be able to help us. In this video, we're going to show you how to get started, how to do that initial installation uh, and how to add our first data repository so that we can begin to scan and gain insight into our data. Now for this installation, we're going to build this inside the public cloud, Microsoft Azure in this case, uh, and there are some prerequisites that you need to meet to be able to install DataSense inside of the Azure cloud. Uh, so it's important to go and check those out in NetApp's documentation. So to get us started, we've also built the initial connection between NetApp's cloud manager and our DataSense installation. So again, check out the uh, NetApp documentation on how to do that. So normally this process would take around 20 minutes, but for time's sake, what I've done is I've created a video uh, and edited down the process into four or five minutes uh, just, just to save everybody time. So why don't we uh, pop over to that video and let's take a look at how the process runs. So you can see here we're inside of the NetApp Cloud Manager console. We can click on the DataSense tab and you see here we get the opportunity to activate DataSense for the first time. So we click on activate DataSense. You can see here we've got two deployment options, one inside of the public cloud, which is the one we're going to do here. But we've also got the opportunity to install our uh, DataSense connector on premises as a VMware virtual machine. Uh, and that's something that we, we can cover at a later stage. But for now, we're going to install inside of Azure. And you can see here that this process takes around 15 minutes. And we're going to edit this down so it just takes a, just takes a few seconds. So initially, we deploy the data connector. So this is installing a Linux VM inside of your uh, Azure tenant. Uh, we then verify the connectivity between that virtual machine and our Cloud Manager implementation, which is what you can see on the screen here. And then we go away to initialize that virtual machine. So we boot it for the first time and it makes some configuration changes. But all this is automated for you. There's nothing you need to do at this stage. So you'll watch this uh, installation run through. And as mentioned, that takes around 15 minutes. You can see here that we're now at the stage where we can begin to configure data sense. But before we do that, I just want to show you the virtual machines that we've created inside of Azure. We have our Cloud Manager connector that we talked about earlier which we'd already created and then we've got our cloud compliance vm what i wanted to show you there is that the size of that virtual machine in fact if we just wind the video back a touch uh, you can see that this is quite a big virtual machine and that's something just to be aware of because this is a vm that's going to run 24 7 scanning your data and it does have costs associated with it so it's important to understand those costs how much that's going to cost you to run inside of azure and to take that into account as you plan your data sense deployment so if we carry on from here, uh, you can see now that we've got the opportunity to configure DataSense for the first time. So why don't we click on that and find out how we go about it. So we're now inside of the DataSense interface. And there's a couple of things I want to point out here. Firstly, we have that free tier that you can see at the top, a free one terabyte tier. That's always free with DataSense. So if you're scanning less than a terabyte's worth of information, you can use DataSense for free. Uh, and then anything above that, you can subscribe uh, to DataSense on a capacity license per terabyte. And also we've got that integrate to Azure information protection labels. And that's something that we'll cover in more detail in a future video. But I find that an extremely powerful uh, tool to use inside of modern information security because it allows us to embed our information security inside of the information. And then regardless of where that information travels in the future, we always maintain control and security. And I find that essential in the modern enterprise as a way of ensuring that our data can be uh, something we can collaborate with, something that can be portable, but it's always something that we can secure and make, maintain control. So it's important that DataSense integrates with that and allows us to use that capability. And as I mentioned, we will look at that in more detail in a future video. So what we're going to do now is going to add our first data source. Uh, we're just going to focus on adding a file share at this stage. But if we click on that Add Data Source button, you can see there's multiple types of data sources that we can add. But for now, we're going to add what's called a file shares group. And that will contain all of the file shares we want to use. Now, in this demo environment, there's just a single file share that we're going to look at. But we start by uh, giving our, data, uh, our, our file share group a name. Uh, cunningly called DataSense Group on, on this occasion. Uh, and then we go into adding our information around our file shares. So you can see we can also support NFS exports, but we're just going to focus on an SMB share at this stage. So we uh, add our, our SIFS credentials, and as it mentions here, our SMB credentials. And this is an account that must have read access to that share and the contents on it. Now, if we want to, if we've got uh, information in there that has enhanced security, we may need to run a privileged account here so that we can interrogate the information uh, held within that share. So you can see here we've added our username and we're adding an appropriate password. And we can change that username and password at a later date if need be. 
So now we add our host and our share, so uh, in the format of host name, uh, share name. In this case, we're using an IP address, uh, just because we've got this in a demo environment, obviously if we had DNS fully configured, we'd be able to use the name in there. So we click OK, we add our share, you can see our share has been added successfully. Now if we go to the configuration, you can also see we've now got continuous scanning running, and we're beginning to map and classify the data uh, inside of that share. So what does that initial data look like? So you can see here that we're mapping and classifying. We also have this ability to activate a slow scan as well, just worth pointing out at this stage. That allows us to use a less resource intensive scan uh, looking for our data if that's something we need to do. And if we do need to change our SIFS credentials, then that's something that we can do at this point as well. But what about the information that we have started to map and classify? How do we start to use that? So I'm just going to give you a brief tour of uh, the governance, compliance and investigation tabs at this stage. In future videos, we'll go into more detail about how you can use the information that we find here uh, to begin to more effectively manage and secure and govern your data usage. So let's start by going into the governance tab. So you can see here straight away we've got savings opportunities around our data. We can do things around stale data, non-business data, where we've got duplicate files. You can see here we're only scanning the small repository with 34 items in it, but we might be able to see things like open permissions there as well. If we click on the compliance tab, this is where we can see the sensitivity levels of our information. So you can see here 9% of the files here have personal information. But we also start to classify the data and identify the types of data that we've got inside of those repositories. And then if we click on the investigations tab, this is where we start to build rules to find out more about data, particularly data that may be sensitive, uh, may include personal information, may include data subject references. So you can see here straight away that we've already identified data that has personal information in it, some that is referencing a data subject. At the moment, we don't have any sensitive personal information in the files you can see on screen, but we'll delve more into more detail um, about what you do when you find that information and the information that you can find out about it by using DataSense. I hope this video has given you some insight in how to get DataSense up and running uh, and how to start scanning your first data repository. So in, in reality, this process probably only takes about 20 minutes inside of Azure to get the virtual machine installed, to get DataSense up and running, to configure it looking at that first data repository and get us to the stage where we're starting to gain insight and information on the data that we hold inside of our enterprise. So if you've got any questions or any comments in general about the video, then do leave that in the comments section. Uh, and if you found this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. And of course, to catch the next video in this series, then do subscribe and that video will be coming soon.